I'm going to move to innovation. So, uh, Frank, we're seeing um, so much exciting innovation in the loyalty space, uh, and it seems like the pace of loyalty evolution is really quickened. Um, I, I have a chart that shows kind of this slow evolution of loyalty and now the acceleration uh, as we bring on these type experiential type things. So we're, we're evolving quickly. Um, looking forward, what do you think loyalty marketing will look like in 2030? I uh, was a music major and I have this um, sort of construct for life, which is columns and rows. And in music, uh, the columns are harmony, points in time, uh, where multiple notes sound at the same time. The row is melody, which is the notion of a unique sort of experience as it wanders through time. And um, in relational databases, folks with technology probably relate with this. The columns are typically markers um, for a, a customer or, or whatever your, your row is. Uh, and so much of what we do um, because we're human beings and we're fallible, is we try to simplify the world by viewing the world through the columns and rather than through the rows. Meaning, okay, uh, you know, here's Frank's income, here's his gender, here's his uh, shopping behavior, here's his propensity to r respond to promotions, and I'm going to put him in a bucket according to those columns versus really try to look at the row and understand what the motivations of that unique in individual are. And so I think in, in, in the, you know, where these things will progress is become much more intelligent at, at viewing the row and it truly becomes one-to-one. -one. I think one-to-one -one is a bit of a fantasy um, because what it is, is is just simply cluster analysis of various columns. And uh, at the end of the day, you're talking a segment of you know, thousands of people, not hundreds of thousands of people, but that's not really one to one. And so, view the row, not the column. It's a, it's a really interesting uh, perspective. Uh, and remember, in our next session, we're going to talk about technology and data and artificial intelligence and machine learning, because I think uh, we're seeing a lot of advancements on that front uh, also. Um, perfect. So, assume it, uh, what's your perspective? What's 2030 going to look like for us in the loyalty industry? Wow, 2030, right? Uh, we, we're talking about uh, uh, a jump uh, or, or a, you know, there was an arithmetic progression and a geometric progression which I was talked. I think this will go beyond any of the progressions that we have seen. And it also reminds me, um, uh, you know, that in 2030, it will be something of what a Steven Spielberg's old movie, Minority Report, uh, which had Tom Cruise walking by the windows and the manic was showing Tom Cruise what he's going to buy next popping out over there, right? It's going to be that level of personalization, I think. I mean, it's scary on the other side as well because of how much data would you share and what data privacy uh, would kick in by that time. Uh, but the key is about personalization and the key is about that one-to-one -one personalization. You know, we talk about this one-to-one um, uh, -one personalization while we build a, a persona and obviously that persona has not many more customers who have a similar behavior, but it is not yet one-to-one. -one. Are we able to leverage technology and get to that one-to-one -one, uh, from that example of what uh, you know, this movie was showing us Minority Report, wherein uh, each mannequin is showing the actual clothes, clothes or the item of clothing that you will be looking to buy next and henceforth is only targeted for you. Um, I think that's the kind of level of personalization and engagement uh, that 2030 will, will bring in where you will know your customers so well, uh, data privacy sort of kicking in over here, that's a disclaimer, but you will know your customers so well that you're able to offer uh, that customer what they want next. Um, you know, and then from an analytics perspective, you go in through an analytics journey uh, where predictive analysis is then, um, you know, taken over uh, into a different angle uh, and yet you're able to meet that demand leveraging uh, that analytics uh, based on, on the inputs that you've got. One more important element, and I keep on referring that, is, is the channel where the customer will engage with you on, the platform that that customer will be. Because they will only engage when they want to engage and on the channel where they want to engage. Um, and that's going to be another key where, um, you know, through the insights, through the intelligence system, you're able to build on an element of, of, of engaging the customer on the channels where the customer is on. Uh, I think that's my key two, two takeaways of what the future will have. And I'm sure uh, once we are in 2030, 
you know the customer would have evolved beyond that and we'll be looking at something different altogether but that's the beauty about about uh, engaging your customers and getting loyalty to engage with your customers and create meaningful conversations touch the heart that's where the key that's not going to change and if you're able to touch the heart uh, by knowing your customers well giving them what they want on the channels where you want uh, there is a success in place there